Atoms are typically made of protons, neutrons, and electrons, which determine their atomic and mass number. But what if I told you that there is an entirely different type of atom, which contains completely different particles? In 1952, Marian Dennis and Jerzy Panuski discovered a new atomic nuclei that have particles which hadn't ever been discovered. They identified the hypernucleus, which may completely change how we classify all atoms. So what exactly is a hypernucleus? Well, a conventional atomic nucleus contains protons and neutrons, but hypernuclei also contain a hyperon. Hyperons are a type of baryon which have one or more strange quarks, but no charm, bottom, or top quarks. There are four types of hyperons, the lambda baryon, composition of up-down strange, the sigma baryon, with many compositions, the z baryon, with many compositions, and the omega baryon, composed of three strange quarks. Each of these hyperons tend to decay into baryons with fewer strange quarks. Hypernuclei are named in terms of their baryon number, which is a sum of the number of protons, neutrons, and hyperons. The simplest hypernucleus is the hypertriton, which consists of one proton, one neutron, and one lambda baryon. This hypernucleus is very loosely bound, with a nuclear radius nearly five times larger than the deuteron, which is a typical hydrogen-2 nucleus. There are larger hypernuclei that resemble typical atomic nuclei. For example, a hypernucleus containing eight protons, seven neutrons, and one lambda baryon is classified as an oxygen-16 lambda. There are predicted hypernuclei containing sigma baryons, but a series of experiments continued to disprove the existence of many predictions. However, an experiment in 1988 definitively identified the light hypernucleus known as helium-4 sigma, verifying the existence of the sigma hypernuclei. There have also been observations of hypernuclei containing Z baryons. In 2015, an international team of 97 researchers from 26 institutes of six countries, Japan, Korea, USA, China, Germany, and Myanmar, led by Kazuma Nakazawa, a senior professor of Jifu University, observed the decay of a Z hypernucleus in a nuclear emulsion experiment carried out at J-Park, Tokai, Japan. With this experimental data, we can observe how the Z baryon acts when bound in a hypernucleus. A typical nitrogen-14 nucleus binds with the Z-, creating a nitrogen-15Z, composed of 7 protons, 7 neutrons, and the Z-. Then, this hypernucleus decays into two resulting hypernuclei, beryllium-10 lambda, which is composed of 4 protons, 5 neutrons, and 1 lambda baryon, and helium-5 lambda, which contains 2 protons, 2 neutrons, and 1 lambda baryon. While the beryllium hypernucleus decays into several nuclei and several neutrons that went untracked, the helium-5 lambda has a far more interesting decay pattern. The helium hypernucleus decays into a typical helium-4 nucleus, a negative pion, and a proton. But this seems to create particles out of nowhere, since the lambda baryon, which is composed of three quarks, becomes a proton composed of three quarks and a pion composed of two quarks. This can be explained because of the strange quarks' considerably higher mass which can lead to multiple decay products that include quarks with a lower mass. This decay is likely via the weak force, which is responsible for many interactions between subatomic particles. Hypernuclei containing omega baryons have been predicted, particularly the proton omega and omega omega di baryons, which are expected to be stable. However, no such hypernuclei have been observed. But the discoveries don't end there. There also exists the anti-lambda baryon, which is the lambda baryon's antiparticle. Moreover, scientists have discovered the anti-lambda baryon in anti-hypernuclei. Firstly, the anti-hypertriton was observed in 2010 by the STAR collaboration and contains one antiproton, one antineutron, and one anti-lambda baryon. The existence of this anti-hypernucleus has already raised an endless amount of questions, but in August 2024, a new discovery arose. The STAR collaboration reported the observation of the heaviest exotic antimatter hypernucleus known, anti-hyperhydrogen-4. This hypernucleus contains one antiproton, two antineutrons, and one anti-lambda baryon. Scientists have used these discoveries to compare lifetimes of matter-antimatter pairs of hypernuclei and found a strong form of symmetry. There are also theories that predict the existence of charmed hypernuclei that may contain charmed baryons such as charmed lambdas and charmed sigmas. The charmed lambda's predicted decay pattern allows us to speculate about how a charmed Z hypernucleus may decay, if they exist. 
The following decay chains are my personal theory and have not yet been proven. The charm Z would likely react with a proton to the bound nucleus, which would produce two resulting hypernuclei, one with a lambda baryon and the other with a charmed lambda baryon. The lambda baryon would likely decay into a proton and a negatively charged pion, and the charmed lambda baryon may follow the theoretical decay chain, producing a lambda baryon, which likely decays, two positive pions, and one negative pion. Let's quickly review the nomenclature of these baryons. First, Baryons with only first-generation fermions, up quarks and down quarks, include protons, neutrons, and delta baryons. Baryons with two first-generation fermions are lambda baryons and sigma baryons, along with their charmed and bottomed variants. Baryons with one first-generation fermion are Z baryons, with their respective charmed and bottomed variants. Lastly, baryons with no first-generation fermions are called omega baryons, with their charmed and bottomed variants. So in order to identify any given baryon's quark composition, we can use the following process. First, we can identify the symbol and determine how many generation 1 quarks are in the baryon. Then, we can identify the heavy quarks noted by the subscripts. Next, we can check for strange quarks, since any generation 2 or generation 3 quarks that are not heavy must be strange. Lastly, we can use the baryon's charge to deduce if the generation 1 quarks are up or down. We can use the same process in reverse to identify baryons based on quark composition. In this example, there are two generation 1 quarks, which means the symbol is either lambda or sigma. However, lambda baryons have one up quark and one down quark, meaning this must be a sigma baryon. Next, this baryon has one bottom quark, meaning the subscript will be B. There are no strange quarks in this baryon. Lastly, we can find the total charge by adding up the individual quark charges and so this baryon has a minus one charge. So let's recap. Danius and Panewski discovered hypernuclei, which are atomic nuclei that contain hyperons, baryons that contain strange quarks. The four types of hyperons each have their own decay chains, which involve the loss of one strange quark to weak decay. Hypernuclei that contain these hyperons have been observed. The anti-lambda baryon has also been discovered, and hypernuclei containing it have been identified giving more information about how antimatter behaves. Then, we observe charm baryons, and I propose my own theory for how the nitrogen-15 charm Z decays, if it exists. Finally, we identified the different types of baryons and their quark compositions, and how to distinguish them from one another. Hypernuclei are incredibly fascinating to observe, and give scientists a key insight to the similarities and differences of matter and antimatter. The addition of a hyperon to a typical atomic nucleus leads to complex decay chains which further tell how strange quarks interact with other baryons. Perhaps one day there will be a more algorithmic way to understand hypernuclei in full, but until then, we can only speculate from a large sum of possibilities. If you enjoyed this video, leave a donation down below to show your support. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.